Hello, little Frida Reba Darcy. Patricia O'Connor here. Hello, world. It is another warm, beautiful day in the Bay. Let's have a quick look. As you can see, I have doubled down on the lay of uh, California coastal redwood seed pods, cones, thingies that are uh, in my brownie tray. And that's a daily look on those guys shows no sprouts. Also, the bed where I found these, I walked Frida and I passed by there just to see how they're doing. They're not showing any sprouts either. Everything is warm. Everything looks like it's love and life. Um, the cypress trees, I am starting to see uh, the little, I don't know if you can tell a difference on the day to day, but these are starting to look a little more raised and pronounced like something is about to happen my little 17 year old from seed clay is hanging out it hadn't really warmed up yet i don't think i don't think either one of those guys are their water intake is showing me that they're still sort of in slow mode not so not so with the uh with the cypresses the ball cypresses uh, they have started taking in a lot of water. I expect for them to be on the move. The uh, cork bark oak is swelling up at all of its little nose and is budding out all over. I'm starting to see a lot more ramification on this guy. We're starting to get some secondary, uh, a little bit of tertiary, not too much, but this is all to do again, and this is just absolutely a brand start to uh, not even spring yet. Now, you know, the sky is just this absolutely gorgeous blue. It's a little breezy. It's about 65 degrees. Uh, so everything is, or most things are well and truly starting to respond to that weather. But it would also be keeping that uh, this first day of February. Sometimes we just get nice like this and nice like this and then mid-February comes around and we get a little God smacked by uh, whatever is coming through because it's actually still February. But I'll take it. Uh, it can get cold between now and February if it wants to. I'll take the warm that we have now as a sign of this is going to be awesome. I have done a tiny amount of prune back there this is the original apex of the tree when I pruned the top of the shoot that came up I was rewarded with the back bud there and I'm like yeah that's exactly what we need to continue to, to keep this all alive and happy so that was the original height of the tree I've just pruned that back down to that it has little these salmon colored I call them salmon colored but they're pink or salmon colored buds are starting to pop out out and about on it you can just in some places they look like little red uh, tapering out to yellow little specks but they'll soon come out as little salmon colored shoots uh, you can also see those on the um, Kodahome maples we're starting to just in the nick of time we did our little primac we got everybody back in some sort of fighting shape. I'm really loving what these guys have been doing with their roots. They're just really showing off. You can see those roots are just kind of twisted and elongated. And uh, I think that's going to be a fantastic feature for these little guys. And we're ready. I've moved the trees down from the top part of the shelf where the wisterias are down to the bottom. I'm hoping that'll make it easier for me to water them and also I have more room here than I had with them in the tray next to the wall. It seems like one tree in the back was always always touching the wall or almost touching the wall or something. I like this. I like having it down here a lot better and uh, I can't wait to watch this guy start budding out uh, for real and just start flushing out and see what we get. Uh, the little guys in the little show hen tin are all doing are all doing nicely. The ponderosa is doing well. The uh, bougainvillea is doing well. 
uh, like its bigger counterparts in the tub behind me, my um, smaller uh, ball cypress has got all these little swells on it where it's about to start budding out but hasn't yet. So that's what's going on there and there. I think I do see uh, a few places on here, not a whole lot. It's just starting to show. I don't really see anything to zoom in on. But I did mention this in the in a video a couple back. I do have a stalling plan to do with my trident maple. I won't undergo it this year, and I probably won't undergo it next year. I think next year will probably be the year for a repot. And have it and having pruned it back this far, I don't think that uh, uh, making huge trunk chops right now would be a thing to do. And by trunk chops i mean eventually i want this to be a uh, be a dominant main branch and i'll do uh, a chop right in here and so that we can just get that motion going uh, i would eliminate this one and then bore down to this crotch right here and hollow that out and then i would take this branch and cut it so basically i would lower the tree down by this much and remove this and hollow it out. And I don't want to do that right now, having just already pruned it back. I don't know, it took me pruning it back to even really think of that as a possibility. I'm also was really worried about uh, the amount of bleed that I'll see whenever I do chops like that. However, um, I did see where somebody else had posted uh, photos of their tree in, uh, one of the local Facebook sites, I think Sacramento, and it was beautiful, you know, uh, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It was a way, it was a way to naturally get around making the third member of a, a trio like that disappear without it, without it just totally leaving some stub there. So that's probably, that's probably what I'll do. I'm also thinking that that will do more of course the tree kind of has a little bit of this is it does this but it also does a little bit of that and then this comes up straight up and just kind of kills it it's sort of angled that way and by going with this branch and cutting this down that'll make that'll make these two branches back here be whatever we want them to be so to speak and they're already got a good start so that is uh, me uh, reaffirming my plan to do with my tridip maple. Probably after it has flushed back from all of this. And then probably after next year's repot. So that would be next. Also, I think it, I'm looking forward to a repot. So yeah, that tree will get... Um, that tree, uh, I will have had it at that point four years, three, four years, and I will be undergoing probably a 10 year transformation, but uh, that'll be my attempt to really make this trident maple be really something. So, yeah. And so this is our Ponderosa. It's doing really well. I'm pretty pleased that uh, about the time I had this going, I was, you know, knowing full well that they like less water than the ones that I had trouble watering earlier really made me snap too. So, you know, I had always said to rake the soil back, to rake the soil back and have a look inside. But also, not only that, but it takes a little while. You can be forgiven if you get a tree and you rake it back and you don't really feel like you know what you're looking at. It takes looking at it every day. Just like once you get a tree, it takes looking at that tree every day to get a good feel for whether or not it's, uh, it's on a decline or whether or not it's on an uh, incline. That was an incline or a decline. So, yeah, and sometimes you don't feel like you even have enough uh, experience to make that call. Let me tell you, if you've had a tree for a couple of weeks and you're starting to wonder if it's looking better, it probably is. If you're starting to wonder if it's looking worse, it might be. So uh, to that end, like I've always said, I rake back the soil and look, and I can typically tell in the Akadama pieces 
uh, also this red lava pieces do that really well. They will show whether or not they're damp. Fairly easy. And to that end, there's a spot here on the top that does the same. Looking at this side of the soil, now this is just me doing this tree, but this is the kind of things that after you've had a tree for a couple of months, you get used to looking at. If I look at this side of the soil, I can't really tell if it's uh, too dry or wet, but I have noticed that when it begins to dry out, this little layer of moss will delaminate from the soil, like the, maybe the soil shrunk. This side, you can see this side is darker. It's not just that it's in shadow, that side is actually darker. And when that side begins to lighten up, that is when I can confirm what I'm seeing by raking back my inch and a half. I've gotten to the point to where I've learned to read the way the soil looks on top. And no, I don't have to be a Zen bonsai master to do that. In fact, a Zen bonsai master the difference between me and them in this case is they already know it's going to take them a couple of weeks to get a feel for that look in me. I spent a couple of weeks wondering if that would ever happen. So I'm here to tell you that over time you will get an idea for what is over and under watering. These got watered yesterday so it was little doubt that it was going to show the, uh, the different colors of the Akadama in that. And yeah, even after I got these guys and I started preaching the rake it back and uh, rake it back and tail, I was still probably over watering this tree, you know, maybe a third more than I am now. And I say that because I don't think I was right to do so. I don't think that third less that I'm watering from even then is, um, is wrong. I think that's probably closer closer to right. It wasn't so much that it was causing me major problems, but once I had a small issue, the amount of water that I had been doing was borderline too much, and that just absolutely, that absolutely catapulted itself big time. Um, add to that, somebody mentioned the fact that I had sort of uh, was about to miss my window for decandling, made me hurry up and decandle the thing when I shouldn't have. And uh, yeah, we just went down a slippery slope. But anyway, enough about that. This is more about you can live to fight another day. I had several people tell me when I acquired my Japanese black pine going, oh yeah, I would definitely be one to overwater my Japanese black pine. You know what? It actually takes a long time for that to happen. Even with my uh, probably overwatering this one for a little while, it wasn't until we had a secondary problem that that reared its ugly head. But having said that, I definitely learned a lot more in those couple of months than I have. And I don't think in the scheme of things, um, I will have lost anything that uh, we can't get back. In other words, I'm not losing the tree and I may lose, it may lose some of it, uh, some of it cared for, kept beauty for a season or two. Those needles that are yellow will not go green. They will uh, be yellow needles only to be replaced by green needles, hopefully to be replaced by more green needles, and that's how we get out of that. But um, I'm just happy that we get to get out of that. My other one is doing absolutely fine, and my uh, other two are doing absolutely fine. Somebody said sometimes you live or die if you have one tree of one kind, but sometimes it takes quite a few to actually know whether or not you're on your game or not. And I, I get that. I get that. So, yeah. Having more than one Japanese black pine probably helps all of the other Japanese black pines that I have. So, yeah. We're just really happy with the way everything is looking. And I thought I would take a second to show you uh, how everything is budding out and how everything is uh, responding to this spring. We have. I'm surprised there's not people at the. Oh well, it feels like Sunday, but it's actually it's actually Tuesday. So yes, this is us. Oh, the Dawn Redwood is also 
It's also budding out a little. I don't know how easy that is for you to see, pick up on this camera, but as are the wisterias, both of those look like they're getting ready to bloom. I hope so. And uh, another look at Haas, our, um, our other ponderosa pine, and another look at our bougainvillea, which I brought in last night. It was, uh, our temperature was in the mid 40s, somewhere in there. It really starts to struggle a little bit with, our, with those temps. If it were a larger plant, it would probably have less of an issue. But it's too easy to not bring in, being at it, as it is a uh, one of the few species they say that you could grow indoors anyway. It makes no sense to not bring that cutie in. Can you see all the little red buds on the Kodahan maples? We probably got into our pruning of this guy at just the right time. All oh, and I can see all of those roots that are just making their way. It just looks. It looks so cool the way um, those roots are all spread out on those trees. And I look forward to those guys getting larger and fatter and being more, being more prominent. They're just, you know, on their own. They're kind of styling themselves in the neatest, in the neatest ways. Uh, so, come on spring. Also, I moved it down to the table from the shelf that gives me more room for the trees to spread out without them bumping the back wall and I, it is easier I think it will be easier for me to water them from over the top than from me reaching reaching over uh, every time you get water on the leaves of these guys they just die back with PM like that same day so yeah I gotta watch that Anyway, that is a good look at all of the stuff that's busting out on all of our trees because we have such an, uh, because it's like 65 or so. My, my phone says it's 61, but that's not a thermometer. That's the weather forecast, and that weather forecast is based on the ground and four floors up. It's always hotter than what it says it is by, you know five to eight degrees or so so yeah quick look at us everybody's happy everybody's doing good our next drop our next video drop will be our Thursday drop and uh, I just want you to know and Frida wants you to know that we so appreciate you thank you for watching